Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. How are you? Good, thank you. I had to unmute you? myself there. I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> I had to realize that I was muted there for a while. No one can hear me. That is the nature of this medium, right? Is yeah. I'd like to go through one whole meeting without having to mute myself, uh, unmute myself long after I've started talking. Mm -hmm. Oh, those are first world problems. Exactly, exactly. Hi, Catherine, how are you? Fantastic, how are you? Good. Thank you for joining us today. We're excited to hear about the Botanical Gardens, um, the Grow Solar Program. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. How are you doing, Kat? Um, good, how are you, Eric? I'm good. So that's what I'm I was gonna ask. Going. Well, I'm sorry, I heard a couple different things. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry, go ahead and answer Eric's question. Oh, I was just asking how school was going with Parkway. It's hectic. It's it's crazy. So um, it's every every week. It's something new and different as far as far as like what who's reentering, what grade mm -hmm. levels, what model hybrid or not. So it's just it's just a constant moving target for for planning everything. So and the the work that we did with with you and Earthways last year, um, just trying to figure out how we can possibly keep that moving forward. But, um, you know, if students are back in class, then hopefully, you know, it'll, it's, it's more tangible for teachers to kind of pick up that work again. Yeah, no, no. We kind of figured that that might be happening as, as people are. Although we have had a lot of Parkway teachers participating in some of our workshops, so. That's awesome. Yeah, we've got a lot of good success on them actually starting up the green class professional as well. So we've gotten, you know, I think a couple dozen. That's awesome. Yeah. So Catherine, I was just going to ask you signed your emails, I think, Kat. So what do you I do? <laughs> I always go like pro professional written. It's like Catherine, but go by Kat. So okay. emails, it's Kat. All right. Either one works. Okay. <laughs> no, just like to let people be called what they want to be called. In life. Yeah, I either think that that's... I'm just not a Kate or a Katie anymore. That was like okay. pre-six-year-old me was Kate or Katie. <laughs> right. We all get to outgrow certain things, yeah. Oh, hi, Jamie. Hi. Yeah, are we expecting others to make it today, Joan? Yes. Um, actually, everybody had agreed that they could meet today. Okay. So we'll wait maybe a couple more minutes and then how many, how many people can we move forward with like, as far as like a quorum? I'm not sure how that, that works or if we don't have any action items or decision making then maybe it doesn't matter. We need five. Okay. And so uh, Joanne is too nice to say this, but in the notion of calling people what they'd like to be called, she shows up as Joan, but it's actually Joanne. <laughs> so just so we, since we're still pretty new, she and I. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Oh. Hey there. Hey, how you doing? Good. Ah, there's Jeffrey almost. Ran into him on his bike. <laughs> With your car? No, no, no. I was walking my dog and my dog. <laughs> Thank <took> goodness. Off. <laughs> he likes to chase bikes. Uh, that's fun. He's 70 pounds. He can, yeah, he kind of pulls. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, 
Eric, if you want to, you can get you can start the meeting. It looks okay. like we have enough people. All right, great. All right, well, um, thanks everyone for making it. Um, Joe, thanks for getting everyone's kind of schedules aligned and all that. I know it's that's always a, a never fun task of trying to make that work. So I appreciate that. Um, I think what, yeah, so I guess just to start off, um, is there someone that can take minutes? And maybe we need to identify a, or a secretary. Do we have one? Because it wasn't Danielle the secretary in the past? I think like unofficially, she took the notes for us. I'm terrible at that or I would volunteer. I can hardly walk and chew gum, so. So uh, for the last two meetings, Elizabeth did them, but I have the wrong, now I'm looking at the right, the last name. Elizabeth Bloomfield Deal, but she's not on. I'll take the notes. Thanks, Thanks John. John. Thanks, John. Not a problem. You'll just hear me tell a little bit probably. That works. Um, okay, well, great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I guess if we want to go ahead and call the meeting order then um, and just go ahead and, and get started. So if we want to, you know, John, if you're able to just kind of type down the names that you see here as far as who's present and kind of skip their formality of, of calling out the name and saying here or whatever. So um, that would be terrific. Um, and I guess if we want to start off by uh, approving the minutes from last meeting. If there's anyone that has any additions or corrections or modifications, please let us know. Is there anyone have any concerns with that? I honestly, I'm scanning through them right now, so I apologize. I did not read them in advance. But we'll I just through. read them, so I'll motion to approve when everybody's ready. I'll second when you're ready. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, all opposed? All right, that carries. Um, very good. All right, well, with that, we'll go ahead and get cruising with the uh, agenda. If in CAT, we have you starting off to talk about the Grow Solar Program. Awesome, and is, I have just a small slideshow to go along with what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna share my slides now, put this into, Okay, so um, thank you all for having us here. Um, working with the municipalities directly has been a huge part of what makes the Grow Solar program a huge success. So just like out of curiosity, how many of you guys have, have heard of Grow Solar St. Louis, been to a power? How many have just heard of it? Heard of it. Or okay, seeing some hands heard of it. Has anybody no, attended about it. one of our power hours, which is our, our educational classes or sessions? Mm -hmm. I, I've been to a power hour and Straight Up Solar is putting solar on our house in January. Woohoo! Woo awesome. Through the Grow Solar program or? Yes, through the Grow Solar program. Well, congratulations. Thanks, um, I'm really excited. <laughs> So wonderful. So I'm gl so glad that you guys have kind of heard of Grow Solar St. Louis. Um, it is, Grow Solar is sort of a Midwest program for, from Midwest Renewable Energy Association. So they have Grow Solar Chicago, Grow Solar, um, you know, Wisconsin. So a lot of different programs throughout the Midwest to bring solar, not just solar systems, but also solar education to communities across the Midwest. Um, MREA or Midwest Renewable Energy Association has been doing Grow Solar Metro East, so across the river since 2016. And in 2019, um, they partnered with us, Missouri Botanical Garden and Washington University in, in St. Louis to start the Grow Solar St. Louis program. Um, in 2020, we had uh, uh, the city of St. Louis, Clayton, Brentwood, City University City, Richmond Heights, and the city of Creek Core as our municipal partners on the program. Uh, what it what Grow Solar is is it's a group by an education program. Um, we work with the economy of scale to work in better discounts for our participants. Um, we work to negotiate a lower base rate than market rate with our um, in, in our contractor, our installer, who is competitively selected from an advisory committee. Um, 
the more people who participate, so the more people who sign up to get solar, the bigger the rebate is for everybody in the program. So we're already starting at a lower market rate than other solar installations, and we're building in um, a group by rebate, depending on how many people participate. And on top of that, we do a lot of education and outreach. So a large part of Grow Solar program is the um, educational power hours or sessions in which we talk about not just how to get solar on your house or what it takes to do that, but actually what solar is, what are all these terms that people in the solar industry are talking about and what they mean to our own homes. Um, and then one thing that I, being from the Missouri Botanical Garden, love that this part of a huge of the Grow Solar program is the energy efficiency components. So we work in with our installer to create incentive, additional incentives for people to um, get energy audits to really think through their building envelope and what is going into their home as in terms of energy efficiency strategies. So that way they're already starting off when they're getting solar, whether they do it this year, next year, or three program years from now, um, at a lower energy usage um, than, than before. Our program is does operate on sort of a limited time offer deal. So the Grow Solar St. Louis 2020 program ended on September 30th um, and we will begin the Grow Solar year three version 3.0 um, probably in spring of 2021. We usually launch around Earth Day with those and then it'll go through about Labor Day. That gives our installer, whoever our installer is, um, for the, the 2021 year, um, a chance to wrap up and get installations done before the end of the year. Our installer for the last two years has been straight up solar, though every year we do go through the competitive bid process to make sure that we are getting the best rates and discounts and additional incentives and program opportunities um, from the installers who apply for that bid process. Um, hey, Kat. Yes. Can we get a copy of this presentation? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think is really important to think about when it comes to talking about Grow Solar St. Louis 2020 and then thinking about 2021 is this uh, federal um, renewable energy tax credit that is dropping to 22% for 2021. After that, it will be 0% for residential. So we are anticipating a large volume of um, customers who may be thinking about solar in the next few years, that uh, potential, you know, tax credit going away will be a big incentive and um, kind of push for getting solar done in 2021. Um, Ameren also has rebates. These will go through um, 2023. There's kind of plenty of money in the pot. So these are additional rebates on top of the, the discounted Grow Solar program already. Uh, here you can see um, the sort of stars are all of the installations from the Grow Solar St. Louis and Metro East program. So you can see that, that it is kind of spread out throughout St. Louis City and County. Um, as well as all of the, the installations on the Metro East side. They've been going since 2016, so have quite a few more installations. Um, this year, we added St. Charles County into our geographic footprint for the Grow Solar St. Louis side, which um, was great because it added a little bit bigger uh, systems to offset some of the really small systems that go in in St. Louis City. Uh, can kind of give you an idea of the impact. In 2019, we held 23 power hours. We saw 71 homes get solar, contracting 424 kilowatt hours of solar, um, kind of an averaging $724 um, in utility savings per customer for one year. Now, 2020 just wrapped up, so we're doing some final numbers, but it looks like we are seeing 447 kilowatts, so we did surpass the kilowatts from last year um, go into play with 61 projects um, so far. So a couple of those will be added or change up a little bit. The average payback for the solar systems through the program still tends to be about 18 years. Um, and the average kilowatt size we saw go up to 7.32. So it went up from like 6.5 something um, to 7.32 this last year. Um, we held 15 power hours. They were all virtual this year. Uh, we, since we started in April, that was in the height of um, sort of all of the lockdowns. So we just made all of our programs virtual and introduced a self-learning 
um, kind of independent learning module that people could participate in. So anybody who participated in a power hour or that completed the self-paced um, learning program was eligible for the program and could sign up for a free site assessment to see if they wanted to move forward um, with solar. Our um, environmental benefits are huge, of course, on top of saving money and saving energy. Um, switching to re the renewable energy for the 2019 year resulted in 407,000 uh, pounds of coal negated and about the equivalent of 439 um, acre forest doing carbon sequestration. So it's a big impact um, to support individuals, homeowners going solar. So this isn't a huge um, commercial solar system. No, none of the systems are going to be over 30 kilowatts. They're all on, you know, residential homes um, or small business owners, um, their businesses. A uh, couple things to think about when we're talking about our pricing structure again is we have this base group by rate, by rate. That is what we negotiate from the beginning, it's less than the installer's market rate, so getting that bigger discount. And then um, the, the homeowner is gonna add their normal um, customized features depending on what kind of features they're looking for, their home is, if they want a battery storage, which is gonna be a little bit more expensive, that's gonna give them the final price. After all of the projects are done, um, that's when that group buy rebate additionally goes into play. Um, so it's usually between one to 4% depending, and there's certain goal marks there. So this year we um, were just below the 3%. So all of our participants are getting 2% on that group by rebate um, there. So here you can see the, the 2020 um, benchmarks for our uh, Grow Solar program. Again, we are just so close to getting to that uh, 1,000 1, kilowatts or one megawatt, um, but didn't quite get there this year. Um, average, so there's a huge range of um, people who are participating in this program, everywhere from your um, person who just wants a really small array, so the uh, one that's like four kilowatts on top of their home, which is going to be about $10,000 to anywhere where there's, you know, two arrays on two different roofs producing, um, you know, over a thousand kilowatts, which is going to be about uh, for 40,000 um, there. So a huge weight range in uh, costs for the program, as well as then what comes into the, um, you know, the average payback and um, what they're, how they're financing. Um, so there are different financing offerings, um, depending on who our installer is. So this year, Straight Up Solar offered um, a couple different unique uh, financing offerings. Um, to help people be able to better afford or take out a, a loan um, with reasonable interest rates and things like that to be able to afford their systems. Uh, you can see that through the uh, Grow Solar program, um, the market price versus the Grow Solar price, there's about 5,000, a little less than 5,000 um, price difference um, in there. So you can see how the the Ameren rebate, the federal tax rebate, uh, and then the um, group buy savings all make a big difference in um, getting that uh, below market price solar system for all of our participants. These are a couple of photos of some of our installations from 2019 and 2020. Um, so this is 2019. They got a, a flat roof mount and then one uh, an array on their uh, garage there. Um, a nice small system right here. I um, believe that's in University City. Just my solar's a little overlooking. This is actually from our Grow Solar Metro East program. Um, so that is a really quick overview of what the Grow Solar program is. It's about education. It's about um, combining sort of re getting renewable energy and the message about renewable energy out there, but also talking about energy efficiency and why that's important in terms of how we use energy um, and then making it cheaper for everybody who wants to go solar. Um, so I am happy to answer questions. Um, when it comes to municipalities participating, there's really no formal agreement that's necessarily, no cost agreement necessary unless um, a particular municipality wants to support with volunteering like their staff time. Um, 
when we do hold in-person uh, power hours, we do hold those power hours in the municipalities that are our promotional partners. It's a little bit different when we're in virtual because we're not holding anything in any location, but we do all invite all of our municipal uh, partners to co-host or speak to our audiences however many times they want. So we'll have a couple power hours. I think the city did two, University City did a couple um, where they were able to share some of their sustainability initiatives with our participants participants um, and then just sharing the, it out in e-newsletters. Uh, we are available to come to different meetings or events that the municipality is, is throwing as part of the Grow Solar program if you're a municipal partner. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what it takes from the municipality side to get in, involved. Um, so we will be looking at getting municipalities, you know, kind of signed on for the 2021 year, um, late winter, early spring at the latest, uh, so that we can be ready for that launch date in right around Earth Day of 2021. So I'm happy to take any questions. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not a solar expert, but I have been to many of the power hours. Again, as far as like the financing goes, how competitive is that as compared to like PACE? Because I know we had, as a commission, worked with Webster Municipality to, to um, allow for property sets, clean energy improvements to homes. And I, I believe that went through, but anyway, like that's, how, how does that like stack up or, or work in conjunction with, or is it separate of? I think it would work. It would be kind of like how they apply the Ameren rebates and, and all that. It would just work in addition to the programs that we already have. So it would just be an additional sort of re rebate incentive to, to get things um, a bit, little bit lower in terms of cost. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? I had a, I had a question. What, what is the status of third party um, ownership of solar? As far as, uh, you know, like in California, what helped it take off was, I mean, the big barrier obviously for people who want to do it is that upfront capital mm -hmm. cost and it's like yeah. buying a car. Um, and, you know, in states where you might have a third party come in and actually own the, the solar um, installation on your roof and sell you the energy, and then they get the, the credit, the tax credits. Yeah, so Ameren has a new program that I, I know, you know, it is one of those programs where you kind of sign up, you 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 know, pay an additional small fee that your energy comes from their solar farm and then your dollars go to help support them investing in more renewable infrastructure, more solar infrastructure. Um, so that's their community solar program that they just, I think, opened maybe couple of months ago. Um, so that's kind of the one that I know of in our area. There are a couple other programs that I've seen, um, you know, on Facebook and stuff that advertise group, group buy or group solar, but none of them are as um, sort of vetted or, or sort of Midwestern widespread as MREAs that we know of. Um, there's a reason why we work with them is because they are a nonprofit that's also very interested in the education side of things. Um, but yeah, Ameren's program is a little bit like what you're talking about where they own the um, solar system and you're just kind of paying to help to, to utilize that um, energy. Yeah. Yeah, I signed up for their first community solar project. So I've been on that for about a year, um, which is a, it's a little bit expensive, but I mean, compared to, it's a little bit of a premium, but uh, I know in other states, I think what's really helped is like literally they will do, and I, I was told that it was available in Missouri. I wasn't sure if it's over here or maybe in Southwest Missouri or Kansas City area where actually the solar company would own the installation on your home. And so they, therefore there wasn't any out of pocket cost up front to the, to the homeowner. Um, but I know the utilities sometimes have, have pushed back on that. Yeah, I don't know of any systems, at least with through straight up solar again, they're the ones that I worked with for the last two years. 
that were like that. I don't know. That doesn't mean it might not be possible. I just don't know of any situation like that. There, there's a lot of, um, I mean, mis I, I think municipalities, if not nonprofits, if not definitely school districts, that that's what the model was maybe five, six years ago often. Um, so that's, that's how Parkway got its arrays across everything is another company essentially owns it outright. Um, and we're just getting the energy benefits. We're leasing it, the equipment from them. But I wasn't aware if there, if, if that was done on a residential scale. I know like nonprofits and schools and churches have to do that because as nonprofits, you, the tax credits don't mean anything unless you have a way to monetize them. What is the, what is the potential um, in these um, group buys, Kat? Like, have munis municipalities put solar on top of their city-owned buildings or um, any schools or anything like that? Or is that, is that excluded out of this? Um, They're not excluded, um, but normally those <laughs> are looking for a bit larger of a system than what is in, you know, this has like a 30 kilowatt limit. So anything bigger than that is not part, cannot be part of the group buy system. So we've had a few small business owners that just need, wanted like a small system that were able to participate. There's an, another program um, by Renew uh, St. Louis, which, in, which is in partnership with MREA, which is for our commercial um, group buy program. Okay. Much larger systems. So if a municipality was looking for something, you know, for their whole building, their city hall that was larger than 30 kilowatts, it would need to go through that program. Okay. Um, but they're not outright excluded, no. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. So you explained that the uh, municipalities that I guess signed on, if you will, that you would host events in their, in their community. Um, mm -hmm. What are the other benefits um, for our municipality to sign on? Um, so there are, you know, hosting in your community and, and us being able to participate in, you know, we'll come to your meetings and things like that. Um, by not signing on, it's, there's not necessarily like your, you know, Webster Gross is not excluded from the program. Um, but we, what we found is that the biggest benefit to the program is really getting the municipalities to agree, share kind of this agreed vision of wanting solar it to increase in their um, communities. So they help us get the word out. Uh, and then from the participant standpoint, we get a lot of feedback that they felt more supportive or willing to do it because they, they knew that their municipality was a partner or believed in the solar program. Um, so we, we got that feedback a couple of times. Okay. And Kat, um, what, so I know you mentioned earlier, like what it looks like for um, municipalities just once the program gets started and you explain the benefits. Um, but, you know, what is there something that you all need from the municipalities or is it just like an, an agreement, you know, is it yeah, a handshake? Usually, is it a, <laughs> well, not yeah, a handshake. Is it a, a confirmation. So we try to make it as low, you know, um, low, not low stakes, but like low in time consuming to get people to mm -hmm. sign on. Um, so it can be an email um, or it can be like a let, we have some municipalities that'll just send us a letter saying that they're happy to participate in the program. Um, and then we ask that we have one contact person so we, we can send updates to that one person who will then spread it throughout the municipality and help us just get the information in e-newsletters or on social media or, or connect or like come and co-host or, um, help us connect with other areas in, in the municipality to hold virtual meetings or hold power hours and things like mm -hmm. that. Do you have like sample like press release or um, yep. uh, statements or whatever that can just be popped on websites or, or yes. you know, yeah. we, so newspaper? We, okay, got it. Yeah, we'll send out like a um, couple of times throughout the program. We'll say, hey, you know, here we're, we're launching. Here's our press release. Here's a good social media paragraph. Here's a good blurb to put in an e-newsletter. Um, here's a great graphic for you to use. So we try to get that 
all of that put together in one spot so it's really easy for the municipalities to participate especially because we know that some a lot of times the municipalities are kind of selecting people um to for to do this that it's not necessarily their primary focus of their job so we want to make it as easy as possible and and so i've got this straight webster groves currently does not participate correct correct but um is it the um and Kat, I know you're not going to answer this, but Eric, is it part of our agenda today to be suggesting that the city participates or is that really not part of yeah, what we're so, here for? No, that's a, that's a fair point, John. So I, th I think that that we're, how I would interpret this is we're hearing this information from Kat and then um, as a commission, we'll make a recommendation or not to uh, city council and the city to identify whether or not that we believe that they should sign on to this, then they can take that recommendation as they will and either say yes or no, and then um, go from there. And then I think from the, the commission, if there's any just kind of additional support, we can, if, if we move forward, if the city moves forward, then if there's any additional support, we can lend in pushing the word out or whatever that might be, whatever there might be solar power hours, whatever else, then I think that that is how we can kind of serve to continue that those promotional efforts um or or if there's any way that we can assist them the city to to whatever but i think yeah i think the action for us now is just that um we can kind of you know let let cat cruise and then we can discuss internally a little bit so to speak and decide what we want to do as far as recommendations go and then the city can make its own determination yep thank you thank you eric um and i did want to say that there are four 2020 group um grow solar installations for Webster Groves this year. Um, so it's a pretty good number, even though you guys weren't participating, it still was wow. uh, reaching some members of your community. Um, and we get a lot of, uh, you know, by word, word of mouth and through people like you guys who represent your municipality or sustainability in general. So thank you guys for listening. Please let me know um, if you have any additional questions and I can send uh, my power um, point to uh, Joanne so that you guys can have access to that as well. Kat, I've got one question. Yeah. So just to summarize the the city, if we would promote this, what, what commitment do they need to give? Um, it's really just a commitment to help us get the word out. So we don't ask for like a specific number of, you know, e-blast or posts. It's what, whatever the city can do. Um, to help support the program. And this last, is this the last year for the rebate? So you're doing marketing now in September, October 4, 21? We're um, wrapping up our 2020 program. So kind of right now our, our marketing is going towards kind of wrapping it up, sharing the news of how our program did, um, which, you know, surpassing the number of kilowatts in year one in the middle of a pandemic and a crazy economy was a huge success in our eyes. Um, so we're sharing that and then we'll start uh, the kind of promotion for the, the spring of 2021 program. Um, the rebates, the federal rebate, that's a huge incentive. I mean, 26% down to 22% and then in 2022, 0% is a huge driver of trying to get people who want to go solar to go solar. Okay. So Kat, just to be clear on timing, um, let's say that the Sustainability Commission says they would like us as a city to do this. The council also agrees. Um, you probably need to hear us by the, about, from us by about the first of the year at the latest. What, give, me a, give me a deadline, essentially. I will say the end of January is really okay. when we're going to be kind of pressing to try and get everybody. We would love all of our municipalities signed on, like, so we can include you in the press release that goes right. out, press release that goes out. That doesn't always happen. Um, sometimes we had a couple um, municipalities join us, you know, three months into the program this year. Um, so, but I'd say end of January to get okay. included in that first press release. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Thank you all. I know you guys have a lot of other things to discuss. I have one more question for you. Are you guys planning to do all the 2021s virtual? I know that um, some of the power hours were at different businesses and mm -hmm. so it might be good to know up front if you're leaning one way or the other so that we could maybe 
uh, if this does go through, we would might want to reach out to some of the local businesses to host. Yeah, that is a great question and one that we are constantly asking ourselves at our planning meetings. Um, we are anticipating perhaps um, a hybrid maybe with potentially some in person. We think that there's still a lot of uh, benefits to having some of the, the virtual power hours just because people have kids, they can't always travel to a brewery or something of like a business center. Um, but it will depend on um, all of our organizations kind of restrict COVID restrictions and guidelines on whether or not we're doing things in person come the spring. Great, okay. Um, any final questions or thoughts or concerns that the individuals might have is, is kind of a, a stopping point on potentially moving forward? Okay. All right, awesome. well, thank Thanks, you all Kat. very much. Thanks, Kat. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Just as a quick comment, I think that um, this would be nice if we could parallel it because we already have the uh, solar panels up on the service center. I can't remember how many years ago that this was done, but some of you may remember that. And I don't even remember if it was Amron UE or who helped us with that project. Well, it doesn't sound as if it's that difficult. As far as signing up, is that what you mean, Jen? Yeah, no, they don't really require, you know, you don't have to right. lay out any cash or commit to a whole lot of anything. Yeah, I think they're just looking for a logo and then help push the word out, right? So it doesn't seem yeah. like there's any, as far as I can tell, it doesn't seem like there's any downside to it. I mean, it's a, it's, it fits in line with uh, same building commission goals, objectives that, that you know, the, the city values and hence that as a commission in the first place. and. Um, yeah, I, I agree. It doesn't seem like there, there's any, any downsides to it. Um, I mean, I think the only thing is just that it, the, the time hopefully wouldn't be substantial to, to actually take their template of communication toolkit things and just push it out to whatever channels. That's it. Laura or Joanne, who would be doing that on our website? Is that a lot of ask on the staff at Webster Groves City website people? I would have our deputy city clerk do that and she would, okay. it would not be very time consuming okay. at all. To That's what I was asking, is there? Yeah, I think it helps tremendously that they have taken the time to put the materials together because then for us, it's a cut and paste job, not a create from whole cloth. I totally agree. So Laura um, or Joanne, what would what would as as a commission, what what would you be looking for from us uh, as far as like a recommendation or uh, to make the process or, or official or formal? Uh, so I think, and and we'll let Joanne weigh in as well. I think you all just need to, as a commission, decide that you would like for. I mean, it, give an endorsement to this, and then we will take it to the council and. Joanne and I can talk about this in terms of how much information council needs, whether it has to be a full work session item, whether we can do it simply by communicating with some paperwork. Um, and then the council would in a work session, I would imagine since they're so informal, simply say, yes, we take the recommendation. Maybe we have more questions or no, we don't. I, I, I'm not gonna predict anything, Never mind. Never, never goes well when I predict something. So let's just check. Well, can I recommend that we recommend this to go to the city council? <laughs> can yeah, I recommend yeah, that I we recommend? <laughs> yeah. I motion. I think, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the, the as far as the commission goes, that, that if there's any essentially paramount objections, go ahead and speak about it right now. Otherwise, we can just go ahead and, you know, motion second and all in favor. I'll second if you're ready, Eric. Yep. All right, second, all right, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Cool, all right, very good. So Joanne, uh, so we may not necessarily know um, by our next, because we have until January, I think we'll leave it to Joanne to figure out when this fits into the work session schedule for the council but we know that it needs to get done in that time frame. So if, if we come back next meeting and say, 
It hasn't been done yet. Please don't think that we've forgotten about it, that we're somehow not going to do it. It just depends on the schedule and we will get it. We'll get it done early enough. So even if there are more questions, we have time to revisit it before January. Is that fair, Joanne? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have space on this upcoming agenda, so I'll probably actually put it on the <laughs> Look at me. Next I'm week. giving you all sorts of <laughs> and we can just go ahead and do it. All right, sounds good then. And Joanne, you've got the slides too, right? From I will have them very soon, Kevin. yes. Very good. There you go. Do, is Thank there someone you. from this commission who might want to come <clears throat> talk about this program then? I mean, you don't, no one has to. Uh, but because I'm happy to convey how uniformly you all liked this program. But if somebody wants to come and spend a few minutes, I think that would be great too. When is the meeting? It's um, October. A week from tomorrow, a week from Tuesday. October 20th. I could probably come. Elizabeth, you're the yeah you 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 have the panels on your house, right? You just said that, right? They're they're gonna put them on in January, yeah. So we we oh, are currently so going awesome. through the process. That is so awesome. So you have so much experience to share. Yeah. Thank you for That's stepping up right. for that. That's perfect. No problem. Could you so can speak to it as a, a user? Right. Hopefully. Very good. Um, well, I guess the next one um, is related to campaign sign recycling. So as uh, uh, November will turn a corner and there'll be lots of yard signs, some of which people will be parting ways with. Um, I think there's a, an initiative that is being put out um, to collect those signs for recycling purposes. Uh, looks like Republic Services is going to be collecting them if they are organized um, in a, a yeah, clean orderly fashion. They'll essentially take that single material type for, uh, for plastics recycling, if I understand it correctly. It seems like uh, multiple municipalities are setting up a collection bin um, and is, is Joanne essentially to ask then whether or not uh, uh, Webster is going to put a, a collection bin or are they also seeking volunteers or, or both? So we would like to do potentially three and if we had volunteers that would be lovely to actually help take apart the signs. The thought is to have one at the library, one at the recreation complex and one here at City Hall. And so um, how would it, so it, the candidate or the candidates volunteers bring this to the site and then it's collected and taken apart at the site by our volunteers. Is that the way it works? Or I think anyone, thinking, if, I, if I understand correctly, um, maybe I misunderstand it, but I think it's essentially would be a, a collection bin for anyone. Like if, so if I okay. purchase a candidate's yard sign in my own front yard and you know, third week in November comes around, I, I want to get rid of it. I could just take that sign, Got it. put it in the bin okay. and, and leave it in there um, as opposed to uh, political parties or candidate affiliations or, or what have you. I think it's, it's essentially, it's available to anyone. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and frankly, I was thinking of it as someone who's put signs in yards is that those of us who may run for something again, often collect them to be reused that way. <laughs> which is also env environmentally sound. And so, um, you know, I, I, I will take it upon myself to con communicate with all the candidates. I know that they better go pick up their own signs before somebody recycles them out of the front yard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if I, if, if I could, um, I just spoke with Jenny Went, um, who is a uh, U-Cities, um, well, sustainability person and so many other things. Um, and uh, she had a really interesting brainstorm. Um, and Joanne, I don't know how this impacts what, what you and, and Mara have likely discussed already, but it's something to consider. Um, Jenny is looking at um, America Recycles Day, which is, you know, one of those hashtag bogus holidays made up. Um, but uh, they're, they're looking, she's looking at that to have like a one collection day in mm -hmm. one spot. 
to help m mitigate like the or eliminate rather the um sometimes people like to get creative in what they want to recycle when you just leave a bin somewhere um and so i was thinking oh this you know she was thinking oh this could be really interesting if she had just had like a drive-through um kind of drop-off situation um now that would require some uh you know volunteer hours um which i know you know i'll speak for myself i'm willing to to give um to help to see that happen but um that way we could have a more organized collection um from laura's perspective it would give candidates a minute to go and collect their signs out of yards and um it, it just it might be um i don't know something something to consider uh, i know that's how one of my friends in uh suburb of chicago they've done it in the past where it's a specific one day drop off you know from eight to one or something like that nine to one so i don't know what what do you all think about that and joanne what would, would that mess everything up for you Oh, no. And I'm fine with um, hearing other people's perspectives. The only reason I was thinking about this is there is a habit by a few to leave their signs out longer than the appropriate time. And so this would encourage them to pick them up in a timely manner. Wow. But I have no issue with doing it another day and just make it that particular day because potentially we could have a lot more participation. You mean, with, like, so Jamie, within your suggestion in that model, do you need to have it a drive through, or is it essentially, or we, would we potentially still be able to communicate that those bins are there, but they're there for just one day, or maybe it's two days, or whatever? Um, so, I mean, I, I get the point of trying to minimize um, contamination possibility, mm -hmm. but also with manpower and exposure for COVID and all that good stuff, like having yeah. it an in-person collection event. Um, I'm not sure how that sits or doesn't sit. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's a good point. Um, and, you know, definitely something to consider. Um, I know that uh, uh, from like a um, operation standpoint, um, uh, Brent at Republic Recycling is uh, willing to loan out of uh, what it's like with those giant boxes on pallets. Um, and, and we would have to go and pick them up. Webster would have to go and pick them up and then deliver them if we wanted to use those containers. Um, and then, um, then we would get them back to him uh, separated with the metal separated from the plastic. Uh, so yeah, in my head, I'm just trying to like roll through any problems that we might be able to identify obviously beforehand. Um, and I can also, uh, because I've never experienced something like a, a sign recycling before I can reach out to my friend in Chicago and see how that went for them and any problems that she could, um, highlight for us. Um, okay, so I think that the, the, the any other thoughts from the group on on how that might look or not look? If we're looking for you're looking for volunteers, then are you need commitments now? Because if this is you know essentially next month, then right, like we would have to just kind of decide on something now, um, as opposed to next month meeting, right? So. Um, <clears throat> And, well, and essentially balance your hours or not or, or whatever else so i'm sure if it, if it was a saturday i could volunteer I, I guess the tough thing maybe if you're going to do that one day is just getting the word out yeah. you, know, you gotta people have to know about it I, it sounds like fun um but they both sound good you know does webster yeah. have a need for it though i mean do we have do people generally pick up their own signs and put them away and keep them for repeat or do we have a need for it i guess is my question i have some old ones in the garage from like years you know ago <laughs> i do think actually that what, what would we call this that there's a latent demand for this because i you know lots of people have old signs in their garages and keep in mind the presidential signs they're done the state legislative signs, um, some of the congressional signs, they might be reused, but there, there will be a lot. And we are, 
um, people who move here from other places often marvel at how many yard signs we actually have around. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think there's probably a demand from my perspective at least. So then maybe I would, what we do is do a campaign sign, um, do the America, like um, what Jamie had mentioned, something like a America Recycles Day. And perhaps we could do it in the recreation complex parking lot and do a drive by situation like we do for when we recycle um, technology. And things yeah, like that. that goes really well. Yeah, um, and I don't know if you guys, if uh, it was, I think it was included um, in the notes you sent out, Joanne, the, 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 what Pennsylvania did for their little um, advertising or marketing for, um, for the program, um, where it was like Uncle Sam, and he's like, I want you to recycle your yard signs. <laughs> and so Jenny was going to just basically grab that and try to throw that out there and whoever, whatever municipalities are going to participate, then throw our information on there and, and, and the details, the minor details, um, to get the to the get the word out to the areas and and maybe you know as a community uh we can figure out a, another way to to get that word out as well but um yeah i i would agree with laura that i any any chance that i can that i think we could grab to keep things out of the landfills especially something that you know brent is willing to take for us at republic and that can be recycled in the chipped and recycled into other things then um you know i'm all for that obviously so are we looking like at November 7th? So America Recycles Day is November 15th, which is a Sunday. Uh. Um, I, and I don't know if, I mean, and we don't have to go along with that. We can obviously choose our own um, thing, but what does the group have an opinion on when or, or if we should do one or just do three different remote collection spots? I will need to actually contact to see if we have the availability that particular, you know, a particular weekend. I know Saturdays are better than Sundays for the staff here. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if we could do that particular day, that probably would be better because that's what other cities would be doing. That's probably. Um, but I'd need to look and see, and I'd probably also need staff from public works to, to assist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would it be fair to say that it's probably easier for the staff from Public Works to just put them out on a Tuesday and pick them up, you know, two weeks later on a Tuesday or um, rather than well, I mean, having we, to be there on a Saturday? It depends it on what we really want, though. I mean, we can do the three sites and, well, it would probably make it easier for them. It'd be less time and uh, intensive if they could do it just drop it off at the locations. Well I was curious do, do you have to pay time and a half for them to come in on a Saturday? Yes. Well I mean my goal is really just see that they're recycled. I, I you know whatever works works. Yeah. If it's cheaper to just put them out I'd just put them out. I was just going to say it might be good to do a little bit after the election, um, especially since we're hearing that it might take a while to actually know when the votes are counted. People might want to keep their <laughs> a little longer than they would. I don't know. Just a thought. It's a good point, Elizabeth. <laughs> That's a good point. So we're looking at January. <laughs> don't say it. Oh, that's no, not funny. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. I hmm. just wondering. Um, there, when I think of yard signs, I think of two different kinds. There are those corrugated plastic ones, and then there are the kind that are, I guess, more prevalent now, or the, almost like a plastic bag that fits mm -hmm. over the frame. Are those plastic bags recyclable? Yeah. Or? So yeah, you can take those, you know, the bag recycling that Trex does up at Schnooks and stuff. You can put those in your plastic films and wrap recycling. But still the metal things would go. The metal things would, yeah, need to go, go into ours. recycling. Mm -hmm. So Joanne, do you just want to kind of 
kick, kicking it around with Mara and try to figure out, yeah, you know, I think how it was whatever best to do it. Agreed. Yeah, I think whatever works yeah. best for the city. I think, um, yeah, to, to John's point, if it re reaches that goal and but whatever works best for the city. We will, um, because our next meeting will be after well, potentially, we'll be after when we schedule. I'll send I'll send an emails out and and notify you of what we think is better and all of that. But I'll definitely communicate with everybody. But yes, I think it's better if I talk to Mara, and also with um, Parks and Rec and Public Works just to get it all figured out amongst everybody. That's okay. for sure. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you so much, Joanne, for doing that. Sure. Okay. Um, next item, I think, um, you know, Jan, I appreciate you putting on. So in essence, talking about what do we want to work on as a, as a group, different initiatives, et cetera. So um, we're kind of bumping up against five o'clock. So I'm, I'm not sure how much time we want to dig in into this, but um, if you want to at least start by having that discussion, um, I haven't really picked on how to, how to frame this or what, what kind of prioritization we've, we've taken different processes in the past of, of trying to prioritize and segment and like we've done various things in the past from you know kind of prioritizing based on categories and uh, like dot voting type system of, of trying to see what what flows to the top and we've also done uh processes where we've had you know d different segments or different individuals working on specific segments in hopes to try to achieve more in the same amount of time by working on multiple different things at once. Um, you know, and I think they, any, any one of those has, has a, has some pros and cons related to it. So, um, I think overall, like it, 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 this group has a lot of different experience and, um, expertise on, on different topics with regards to sustainability. Um, so I think that everyone's interest is going to be probably in line with, with what those are. Um, but I, I guess just kind of open it up. Like, are there, are there certain things that, that individuals would, would like to see and, and promote? Because I think that we're ba based on a recent meeting, we essentially have been kind of told that we've got a little bit of a blank slate and kind of work on various things that the, 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 the charge essentially the commission is to uh, uh, it is pretty broad in, in what it is that we can or can't work on. So it's not essentially as narrowed as, as, as we may have thought um, at one point in time. So, um, so it seems like we've got a kind of broad direction on if we continue to focus from uh, kind of outreach residential perspective from like, you know, this, this great initiative that Jamie's brought up um, or if we're working on something that, that's more uh, um, kind of operations focused or, or not, or, or coming up with recommendations along those lines. So, uh, but what's everyone's, I think, just kind of initial gut feeling. Eric, I think, um, like you said, I think, um, I don't know, I know we've tried with sort of maybe mixed success to break it down into maybe subcommittees and have yeah. everyone bring some ideas to the table and I think that's a good idea and maybe I don't know maybe if it's appropriate at some future meeting to just wipe the slate you know clear the agenda and just have a brainstorming meeting along the lines of you know what do we want to tackle and I think in the past we found it good to have maybe a several different initiatives working because there's going to be times when things slow down and other times when things get busy and um, you know if we break it down I, I mean, I'm thinking more along the lines of, you know, the things we've done recently tend to be more along the lines of either energy, waste reduction, or, or transit, walkability, bikeability. Um, and if, you know, broke it down into three committees and said, hey, come up with a handful of ideas and bring them back to the next um, meeting and just start throwing things out and see what makes the most sense, that might be a place to start. I think that's a really good idea. Um, I think that 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 way we we have some time to prepare a little bit, kind of think through on what our thoughts are, um, kind of reflect back at what's been effective and has been maybe less so, and and 
try to, to, to work through that next meeting kind of very intentionally. Um, I think that that's a really good idea. Um, I think with that too, I guess I would kind of ask maybe Joanne or Laura, if there are certain things that, um, that each of you would think would either be particularly effective or uh, on the flip side, if there are things that in particular that you think would be ineffective or, or not, a, not uh, as valued for a uh, commission to kind of spend time on or, or focus on or, or what have you. So um, just make sure that we, we, we head down a path of, of uh, least not necessarily least resistance but a path of of you know an effective path anyway so um that would be i think also helpful great okay um all right well with that then uh maybe we'll we'll plan on preparing for for that next um meeting and so kind of our, our final task of the day then is to identify a uh, meeting time that we can hopefully work with uh, on a consistent basis. So I don't know if, if we, if a getting a calendar is out right now would necessarily be good, but I, I don't know if, if Joanne, if, if what you've been doing with kind of a doodle poll, if there is a method that we could do on certain days or what have you of the month that it might work best for people as opposed to, to I, I don't know i'm not sure what the, the the features are of 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 that platform in order to, to segment kind of recurring meetings so uh, my only challenge is there are so many other boards and commissions meetings that the city has that i'm pretty limited to the times at which i can offer for our commission to meet and then in addition to that, I was hoping that I could get something pretty reliable because it puts everybody in a situation if you don't know necessarily when the meeting is going to be until a week before, sometimes things change. But if you know, for example, that it's always going to be the first Monday at four o'clock of the month or something like that, it's helpful sometimes to just, you know, have something reliable that you're going to have each month. And so I think that's more or less one of the reasons that I did that. And I think we also have some commission members who would prefer that too, just to have that reliable thing. So that was what I was hoping for. Yeah, I'd agree. I think having a standing meeting would, would be, uh, I think everyone appreciates that way that we have it on there. That, that there's some things, like you said, pop up and not be able to make it, but um, that way you can at least know. So um, are there, would, would do you perhaps maybe put within that due to pull like what those times availabilities are that, that you may have that, that we could potentially identify with our schedule? I think historically speaking, uh, this is a group that has typically met on Mondays um, and some including myself, like certain Mondays of the month just historically do not work. Um, and other things pop up that kind of prevent it or from, you know, during Kind of crazy sounds of COVID, but but I think other others is the same. I think others might have uh, certain Mondays of the month that don't work, or other et cetera. So, um, is that something that we should look at doing? If we could at least determine a day of the week, I and, and again, I don't mind doing the doodle polls to find out what works for everybody. But it seems to me that it generally works for everyone to do Mondays and late afternoons on Mondays. There, are, I'm trying to remember who it was and I don't remember I don't remember who it was Elizabeth I don't remember but someone had mentioned you know the challenges with um, taking care of young children etc and um, and so I just um, wanted to make sure that whatever we do it works for everybody and I know that at least in the past the Monday at four o'clock worked well but I don't know if first Monday, second Monday, whatever works better. And if you want me to send a doodle poll out again and identify that, I can do that. I'm open to what everybody wants. Yeah, yeah so I mean, it, it, I'll leave it, everyone else, if you can chime in, like for, for me, second Mondays are out, um, historically have been out. Um, first or third Mondays, I think generally could work, um, but I'll leave that to the group as well. That's yeah, let's do, th well, uh, third, I vote for third Mondays of the month.
That works they, for me. Anyone else have a preference or okay? That works for me too. Yep, okay yeah. with me. I'm good with that. Yeah, cool. that works. Okay, so sorry, I was heading out of road over, over complicated. So third, third Monday is at four then. So it's third Monday? That's what it's sounding like, yeah. So Eric, I know that you're about to sign off. Do you mind if I mention two things? Please. Um, one is the plan commission is beginning discussion of something called lot area ratio, which is the size of a house you can build on a particular lot. Looking to, we've asked them to look at scaling that down a little bit and there are clear environmental implications of that. So I would ask you all to, um, tune in or follow, you know, see what is on the city website about this. And I would encourage you if this is something that you're supportive of, or if you have ideas about that, you do submit those ideas to the plan commission. Um, they have uh, more sort of ordinance writing responsibility than most commissions. And so the first draft of the ordinance is going to come from them. And so if you want influence on that first draft, that's where you need to start. Um, the second thing is that I promised to talk to the mayor about the clean mayors for clean energy initiative and I've had that conversation. I understand now or she, I, it has been communicated to me what the mayor's concerns are. I can go ahead and share them with you now. It's going to require, I think, a little bit more of a discussion than we can do in five minutes. So we can agenda that for next time or I can plow ahead. I'll let you decide. Um, how how long do you think that you would need to how about this i'll give you the short version uh, and then maybe the discussion you can think about things and maybe the discussion is for next time or you can tell me otherwise okay. so i did ask the mayor about you know because you all had uh, discussed this a couple of times i asked her why it had moved forward she she raised a couple of object objections the first one being that um, in her mind that there really is, there's no specifics to this, that is a purely symbolic act and she doesn't want us to commit to something that we can't do. Uh, and so the question then would be, you know, what, do, what is this really committing us to as a city in her mind? And then um, what is it that we, you all or some group within the city will identify as a path to getting to the commitment that, that we would be making by joining this? And then the second objection is she has talked to uh, other mayors, and I don't know who those mayors are, who have said that they will not sign because they believe it commits them to something they can't do as well. Um, so I think there's a little bit about not necessarily um, being a city who has done this when others haven't yet figured out how to make it work, as well as for ourselves defining what it means and, and how that might work. Um, I don't think that this is a reason to say, I'm not saying to you all, don't pursue this. I'm providing you with a context of what's happened so far. And I think what it means is, if you wanna make the recommendation to the city council that the way our council works is that the entire council decides whether, decides whether a mayor will sign on to something or, or, or not. And so you all can still recommend and then the full council will make a determination about whether the mayor signs this um, because Jerry has objections, I think anticipating those and talking about what those, what answers to those objections are is a, is a better way to think about moving forward than to just have me go back and say again, hey, they want to do this. Um, so I think that means a little bit more formal discussion of what this means for our community and why it's a good idea and maybe one of you coming to present to council as opposed to just passing it along during a work session. Thank you, Laura. I think the, those are all valid points and, and valid um, uh, challenges to work through with any type of initiative. So I think with something that I would have question on, and, and we don't have to get into the details now, but like in, in whether it's this, this initiative or, or signing on to you or, or others is, is in order for this commission to potentially problem solve, in order to try to identify what those objective weak points potentially are, um, that there may need to be a certain amount of, of uh, communicating within city resources to identify potential paths forward or right. navigating what's workable, what's not workable. And so I think that, that, that 
if, if we're not able to identify what types of, of mechanisms in order to, to get that communication done somewhat efficiently, then any individual question or back and forth could potentially take a very long period of time. So any type of complex problem solving could, could be exacerbating. So I think that, that whether it's this or anything else, identifying, you know, before we come up with the recommendations or, or going through the mayor's potential objections, um, for us to come up with an effective plan that's actionable, how, how can we develop that? How can we build that? And so that's, that's hearing what you're saying, I'll, I'll take that in, but that's, I think, just kind of an initial thought that I have with it. Well, and I will just say in response to that, that it, you know, I don't think it has to be, here's exactly how we get there, but maybe it is identifying a process in which the commission, staff, other people can work together to identify the places that we are, that would be most fruitful for us to work to that goal. Okay. Um, can I pipe in here briefly? Um, I did talk to some uh, someone at this at Sierra Club to kind of get a better understanding of um, what exactly the ask is, um, and I um, got a little more information. Um, basically, saying you know that Sierra Club is using this as leverage um, to work with uh, and encourage Amarin to act uh, more quickly and saying that municipalities are interested in this. Um, that said, um, you know, the Sierra Club would be, you know, Eric, to your question of like, how, what, how do we make a recommendation on this and, and being fully informed? Sierra Club's willing to send somebody to chat with us, um, like um, to present to us, if, if that's something we're interested in. Um, so I don't know if, if that's something we wanna, uh, you know, potentially put into on, onto our agenda next time or after our planning session. Um, so yeah, that's what I got. I wanted to just ask one thing really quickly. So Eric, you had asked in your, you sent me an email and you said what the process would be to provide the city recommendations to be made with regard to the SG collaborative development and other future developments. And my answer would be, and it may differ from what Laura says, but I think that if you would provide to us, similar to what you did when we were doing Firehouse 2, the very beginnings, and there were certain things, um, I, I still have that sheet from what was provided by Sustainability Commission. I think if you did something similar to that, that would be very helpful. Okay, that sounds good. The only thing I would add, Joanne, is I don't think council ever saw that in in the last time around. And so that's the kind of thing that I think as we as council consider SG Collaborative's proposals that the full council get has access to that as well. Exactly. Okay, great. Um, yeah, that'd be helpful. Cause I think it, it kind of, the, those thoughts were kind of in the same vein with like the city lot sizes essentially of what you're kind of mentioning and like environmental impact is okay, well, if there's certain criteria requirements that the, the council wants to consider or, or or requiring commitments of future developments or wherever that might be, whether that's lot sizes or if it sizes the variable surface or if you need whatever that might be. So that's good to know. So, so I think, Laura, part of the problem that we had with the firehouse was that we were just too late to the game. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, um, you know, like we would hate, so that was a fairly small project and this SG collaborative thing is enormous, right? So I don't think we would want to be late to the game. Do you have any idea, like if we're gonna provide something, when we would need to do that or are we already too late? I would say, and I'm gonna let Joanne wait in here in a minute too. I would say, no, you're not too late. Um, we have not seen yet any of the envir environmental impact studies. We haven't seen anything in terms of the Greenway, uh, sorry, not the Greenway, the um, Shady Creek. Um, so have they gone far down the planning process? Yes, they have. Our, our response to that planning process hasn't happened yet. So, but I would say, you know, maybe 30 days at the most, this would have to be something that is that circulated. So it's, it's, it's imminent, right? If we want to put something in there, we have to do it before the end of November, right? In well, so the process is going to take several months 
But the kind of things you're talking about, and this is not my area, so you all can be free to correct me, but you know, anything that is asked for is going to, it's, they're going to have to incorporate, and that's going to take a long time in terms of their planning. Now, if, um, you know, given what they've said to us already is that there are many environmental features that they plan to incorporate anyway. So it may be that it's a matter of checking off some things on your list that they've already done, but you may provide them with things that they haven't fully thought through yet. So, but, so the, I, I don't want you to, I don't want to suggest the project has been approved and we're moving forward yeah. really soon. We're, we're at the beginning of a long process of figuring out what the financing look like, what the actual buildings are going to be and things like that. So I think you're soon enough, but I do believe you're right. By the end of November, then yeah, the train may have left the station by then. And I think at least that's, in terms that's, of planning. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, to John's point, like that's, that's, that's a pretty limited amount of time in order to come up with like a set of standards in which, you know, the commission might recommend that the city wants to consider and then potentially vote on the committee. You know, like that's, that's a, that's a really, really fast turnaround. And, and I know, um, just in, in a lot of the comments and feedback that I've been providing, and we even discussed it at the SG, SG Collaborative Commission, St. Louis Commission meeting, like of, of talking about, you know, different rating systems, lead or, or zero net energy or certain design commitment standards of what I, I you know, personally, not speaking for the commission, but personally, I, I think we should strive for if there's going to be a development that's massive, we should, I think, personally, I think we should do it with the best leg forward, especially with sustainability being one of those three goals and objectives of the project. Um, and, and so I think some of the, the feedback coming back from SGA Collaborative was, we're going to do that stuff. We're just not going to use a rating system or we're going to do some of it and sprinkle it in here. It, 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 as, as just, you know, taking that, that feedback back since they haven't done any of the design or whatever, it, it kind of makes it sound like that we're just going to do what we're going to do anyway, which is we think good enough. And, and, you know, you'll, you'll be, we'll, we'll share that information with you to be transparent, which is appreciated, which is probably more than I'm sure a lot of elements. However, like if we're wanting to try as, as a commission or a group or whatever to say like, and, and, and municipality say like, no, we're, we're going to design to, to this standard. You're going to have each building needs to have an energy performance rating of such or a lead certified level of such or I, wh whatever that might be. I don't know, but like that's, that's, that's a lot to figure out in a, in a 30 day window. So I'm just, I'm just kind of wondering I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know where to where to take it from here. Like what to to go through with that, John. You you're much more experienced in well, how. Well, well, you know, I don't know, Eric, but I'll just throw this out. And I'm sure, Laura, that you hear a lot about this on the council. There's a part of sustainability that says, "Hey, I'm going to meet a certain group of metrics." But there's another really key part of being a sustainable community. That says, "I'm going to do something that's in the community's best interest, that fits with the scale, the quality, the." Uh, the, the uses that, you know, makes, a, makes things work well. That's a very, that's, that's not something that's easy to put metrics around, right? Um, and I'm certain that, we, you know, they're going to be able to meet all the latest and greatest, you know, energy conservation issues that are already written into the code. They're already fairly stringent. I'm certain they're going to have to comply with anything that MSD comes up as far as, as uh, you know, water conservation, all those, those aren't the issues with this project. Well, and I, this, I, think that's, I think that speaks to, I think, the amount of time that would be required for something like this, because I might disagree a little bit there, is that, that I feel like that, that there are case examples across the country of, of exceedingly high-performing buildings that are more than code, um, which code is essentially just building a building that isn't illegal. Um, so that's great, but if we want to do you know, more than not being illegal, then, then what is it that, that these projects could potentially be able to achieve? So, and, and just the, these, essentially kind of a differing opinions on a, on a similarly uh, minded and, and objectives of this type of goal, I think is kind of speaks to a little bit of where I'm kind of going in with the, the amount of time and like what, what type, how, how we might be able to put something concrete as a, as a group or, or as a city or whatever for this development um they, they would make it better to to you know better performing metrics in one case and better 
performing to its constituents and, and residents and users is, is another. So. Yeah, you can see, Eric, even with just like the discussion that we had the last couple of minutes, that there's an awful lot to chew, you know, to, yeah. to mull over there, right? Yeah. And, and I agree with you, like code is a minimum. You, you could certainly be much, much, much better performing code. Um, the code's gotten a lot better with the yeah. latest uh, IBC. So I guess I would offer, a, so let's just say for the sake of argument that this is something that time-wise as a group, you really couldn't get done. Um, there will be anywhere from four to six opportunities before the council, before the plan commission, other places for public input on everything as it goes forward. So if the commission can't, doesn't have time to speak as one voice, then I would encourage each of you to follow those closely and every time you write to us, write to us as a sustainability commission member and, and make sure it's clear that, that it is coming from a resident who has some expertise in this area. Uh, because, you know, John, what you're saying is something I think we are, we are very attuned to. And that is, um, we don't, no one wants to regret in 20 years that we did this. If we do this, I, cause again, we're speaking as if this is gonna happen and I'm not sure it's a sure thing at this point because we there's so much we don't know and, and so you know to to be reminded of the different aspects of sustainability to be reminded of what this means for our community and the definition of who we are is good for every single one of us great i think that's that that's appreciated then, laura i think that that well said. It identifies you know a good good communication methods that we can potentially do is, is writing to city council um, and putting that information out there, if nothing else, um, if we're not able to try to get something solidified in the next, you know, 30 to 45 days or whatever, so. Okay. Um, great. Well, thank you. I appreciate you kind of bring those, those, those sure. uh, other topics up, so. And thank you, Joanne, as well, for um, kind of penciling this one in. No problem. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Well, with that, um, unless there's anyone else, do we do we want to have a motion to adjourn? And with that being the third week of November, so that what is that? Is it the sixteenth? So just put that in the minutes. Eric is November 16th, four o'clock. Yeah, November 16th, 4 p.m. Is this going to be, um, our, are we going to be discussing our path forward? Is that going to be our Yeah, yeah, I think we'll, let's, let's just come prepared to discuss kind of a path forward as a commission as well as uh, potentially talking more to the point of the uh, the mayor's for 100% clean energy point. I think those are maybe potentially a couple um, items that we want to chew on. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, that is, then we have a, have a motion for adjourning. Motion to adjourn. All right, second. I'll second. All right. Um, all favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion to adjourn or being adjourned. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Right. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Bye. Yeah.